Hello guys. Today I'm going to be building this World War II RAF bomber resupply set from Airfix. This is a 170 second scale kit which includes everything you'll need for an airfield diorama. So you can see on the back of the box here we have a uh, Tilly utility vehicle, we have a um, fuel bowser, we have some bomb trolleys, lots and lots of different types of bombs, and then we have this uh, Bedford truck. It's worth pointing out that although there are two Bedford trucks pictured on the back, you can only build one version, either the fuel version or the uh, general cargo version. You can't build both at the same time. Of course, this kit is perfectly suited for things like Airfix's 170 second scale Lancaster, and that's exactly where I plan to use it. Before we begin, guys, I just need to say sorry. I know the lighting quality is poor in this video. I know there's lots of high ISO noise. Uh, most of this video was shot before I had any new lighting and uh, most of my possessions are currently somewhere on a boat, somewhere in the ocean. So let's have a look inside the box. I've got a bunch of sprues here, perhaps not as many as we might think, but of course this is 172nd scale. And essentially it's one sprue per vehicle. Here we mostly have parts for the Bedford truck. A sprue which features the bombs, ladders, uh, some scaffolding, and a few of the miscellaneous bits and pieces, including a push bike. A few more bombs. And the Bowser. I started by building the Bedford truck and I decided to go for the fuel version rather than the cargo version. Straight away I was really impressed by the amount of detail that's on these kits. Each of those squares on the cutting mat in the background is one inch. So really these vehicles are only about two inches in length. Despite that though we've got an exhaust pipe underneath, we've got a nice little front bumper and lots more detail to come as well. As I built these vehicles up, I realized that keeping them in sub-assemblies would be a much easier way of painting them. So in this case, for example, I kept the, uh, the cabin separate from the chassis, and that would enable me to get some paint underneath that chassis in all those small nooks and crannies nice and easily. One interesting feature, and Airfix have done this on uh, several of the vehicles in this kit, is that the doors are entirely clear. And the idea is that you mask off the window and paint the rest of the piece. And that's quite a nice idea actually because it's a lot easier to mask than to try to fiddle around with uh, PVA glue to get uh, small clear pieces into small gaps, especially at this scale. You can see there, there's clearly some sanding that needs to be done on that seam, but nothing that's too difficult. So here's our finished Bedford fuel truck, and I really like that. I love the amount of detail on here. I'm really looking forward to painting this. And you can see here the sub-assemblies which I've left it in to facilitate that painting. Moving on to the um, fuel or the water bowser, and this bottom part here does a great job of keeping the two tank parts together while the glue dries. That said, the seam at the top of the tank is a bit awkward and needs more work than the uh, Bedford one did. The build is very simple. You'll notice some detail on the inside here. The instructions don't make it explicitly clear, but there's nothing to stop you leaving these rear doors open. And in fact, that's what I plan to do. Apart from that, the tank goes onto a small chassis piece and it's a really easy build. 
I haven't shown a huge amount of the build process here because the vehicles really are quite simple in terms of number of parts and they build up in a very similar way. But here is the nearly completed Tilly. And here's that example of what I showed you earlier with the clear part for the entire uh, top and side. The tractor was also a fun little build. And like all the other vehicles, I assembled these parts in the subassemblies, put them together, dry fitted them to make sure everything was okay, but kept them separate for painting. The only issue I had was here, and it's only a minor issue really, but the fitting of these two parts behind the seat in the tractor is quite difficult. And I was quite tempted to glue the seat in place, but again, because of the painting situation, I didn't want to do that. So really I just had to hold the seat in place and then with my other two hands, somehow fiddle around these pieces to get them aligned properly. And finally, here is a view of the bomb trolleys and the bombs themselves. You can see we've got a couple of um, very large bombs here, a cookie and an 8,000 pound bomb. We've got some 1,000 pound bombs, and then we've got about six of these small bomb containers which contain incendiary bombs. So the number of bombs we've got there is clearly more than enough to uh, arm one Lancaster, because they wouldn't have all types of bombs at once. So I may well spread this set over a couple of Lancasters. I've got the Dam Busters Lancaster, that obviously has the upkeep mine, but perhaps the, the fuel bowels or something could go with that, or the scaffolding maybe. I've got the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 Lancasters, so perhaps they could share some of the bomb load between them. And I've got another one of the Mark 1s ready to go in the Far East um, camouflage scheme as well. So lots of Lancaster action coming up. So guys, that was a quick overview of this Airfix World War II RAF bomber resupply set. This was a great little kit to build, I've really enjoyed it. I've also got somewhere in the um, cupboard the B-17 with the um, US Army Air Force uh, resupply set as well. So that'll be a nice one to compare later on in some time in the future. The only other thing I'd say about this kit is it would be nice to see some figures included. It's quite hard to find 172nd scale ground crew from this era, particularly who would fit with these vehicles. So maybe uh, refueling or working on the engines from the scaffolding or driving or something like that. Without figures, these vehicles look a little bit ghostly, so it would be nice to have them included. I know I haven't painted anything in this video, but that will be coming up in a future video. So before I go guys, let me say thank you very much to all of you for watching and a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Without all of your support, this channel would not be possible. So it is greatly appreciated. And you may have noticed towards the end of the video, the lighting quality improved. That is because I was sent this very nice uh, BenQ e-reader light. They gave it to me for free and they asked me to review it. And I'll be doing that in a separate video because I've only had it for a few days. But so far, I am very happy with it. Normally on my desk, I use either two or three uh, lights from Ikea. And the end part of this video was shot with just this single light. And I'm sure if you compare the end with the beginning of the video, you'll notice the massive difference there. Okay guys, so until next time, thank you very much. Take care, have fun modeling, and I hope to see you in the next video.